This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Academy's F35B, Zvezda's Delta Class Sub, and Edward's Henrio. New product rundown brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown, the video series detailing the latest kits. I'm Elizabeth Nash. In an effort to follow CDC guidelines and be safe during these challenging times. I'm Aaron Skinner, joining from a remote location. Our first kit today is a subject that needs a little introduction. It's gotten a lot of play on New Product Rundown in recent years. It's the F35B. This time, it's Academy's 172nd scale B variant. This is the vertical takeoff and landing version of the Strike Fighter, now in service with the U.S. Marine Corps, which this kit includes markings for. Typical of other F35 kits, Academy divides the fuselage in upper and lower halves, including the wings. The upper features recessed panel lines and subtly raised places for the lighter gray outlines. These are more of a texture change than anything else. Also, here is the upper fan for the forward vertical flight system and even latch detail for the canopy. With surface details similar to the top side, the lower fuselage has openings for the landing gear and weapons bays as well as the wing vertical flight vents. The separate lower forward fuselage incorporates the opening for the nose gear bay and the lower vent for the vertical ducted fan. The tip of the nose is one piece. To bolster the thin lower fuselage, both weapons bays and the frames for the gear bays are a single piece. The wheel bay roofs are added to it. The fuselage halves also sandwich the outer and inner intake parts with the auxiliary opening. The intakes end with a front fan. To fill the open louvers for the front ducted fan, there's an insert with molded fan. At the back end of the fuselage, inside a molded alcove, you can install optional parts to pose the variable nozzle in takeoff and landing mode or flight mode. Other details here include the rear fan and the two-part nozzle. The cockpit includes a tub with rudder pedals and side console detail, separated throttle and control sticks, multi-part, ejection seat, and instrument panel. Decals provide the multi-function displays as well as the console details. The vertical tails have fine surface molding and the kit provides optional elevators for flight or VTOL mode. Also given are optional leading and trailing edge flaps to pose them up or down. The landing gear bays and legs show good detail, and the main wheels have separate tires. There's detail molded inside the gear doors, and separate doors are provided to pose them closed. Also given are optional closed or open duct doors, as well as closed or open weapons bay doors. To fill the latter, the kit provides a pair of AIM 120Cs and a choice of GBU-12, GBU-38, and GBU-31 bombs. Optional wing pylons allow any of those as well as AIM-9X sidewinders to be hung below the wings. The other ordnance option is a centerline gun pod. The canopy and the chin targeting pod are supplied in clear plastic, which doesn't appear to be tinted gold, as is seen on the full-size Lightning II. What is cool is that the internal framing is provided separately, making painting easy. The extensive decal sheet gives markings for three Marine F-35Bs, one each from VMFA-121 Green Knights, VMFA-211 Wake Island Defenders, and VMFAT 501 Warlords. The sheet also includes all of the panel framing, eliminating the need to mask and paint all of that detail. That, along with the myriad build options, definitely make Academy's F-35B a worthy addition to the crowded marketplace. Next, let's take a look at Zvezda's 1 350th scale Delta IV submarine. These subs, known as Delphin in Russian or Dolphin class, are large and capable of launching multiple ballistic missiles. Seven Delphin class submarines are in service. This kit represents K114 Tula, the fourth built. Almost as long as the U.S. Navy's Ohio class subs, the Delta IV is long, which makes for a long 135th scale model, about 18 inches overall. Surface detail on the hull halves comprises a few fine recessed panel lines, a few raised plates, and some vents. The hull's rear is divided in upper and lower halves, including the twin screws, which build from individual blades and a shaft. The area above the waterline is separate, with a long base, including deck fixtures, as well as the sides and top of the missile housing. A series of internal braces gives the long model strength. The sail halves and its upper deck with weather deck contain a bunch of equipment like periscopes, antennas, and sensors. Optional parts allow for that stuff to be posed stowed or deployed. All of the boat's rudders and planes are movable inside their housings. That includes the planes on the sail. A series of small intakes and vents finish the hull. 
Two of the missile hatches can be post open to reveal a pair of R-29Rs in their tubes. A basic stand is included along with a nameplate. The decal sheet provides the white boot stripe, draft markers, stencils, flags, and the Tula's crest. This should be a straightforward build with nice detail and good options that should be perfect for a quick project. Finally, here's the latest version of Edward's 148 scale Hanrio HD1, a limited edition featuring the Belgian built fighter in Italian service. Now, the plastic in this kit's been around for about two decades, but as always, Edward is great about re releasing its older kits with great marking options and improved instructions. Surface detail on the smooth plastic is minimal, in keeping with the subject, but what is here is appropriately raised and recessed. Both the lower and upper wings are single full span parts with nicely rendered rib texture and control surface outlines. A one piece tailplane and vertical stabilizer with rudder finish the basic airframe. There's a little structural detail molded inside the fuselage. To it is added the cockpit floor, frames, rudder pedals and control stick, a support for a photo etch metal seat, and instrument panel. Up front inside the one piece cowl is the Larone rotary engine for the two bladed prop. Other features include the machine guns for the front fuselage, fine struts and control horns for the wings, and the landing gear, as well as a clear windshield. In addition to masks for the windshield, wheels, and the demarcation between the metal and fabric parts of the fuselage, the kit has a photo etched metal fret that supplies the instrument panel, seat, seat belt, controls, body panels, and other details. A colorful decal sheet provides markings for six Italian Hanrios in a variety of schemes with personal markings some camouflaged, others in silver dope. All those colors would make a great addition to a display of World War I aircraft. Indeed. Look for a review of the Delphin class submarine in an upcoming issue of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. In addition, I plan on doing a comparison review of the Italeri and Academy F-35Bs. And you can see more new products in the May issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com and please stay safe and remember that less time doing stuff outdoors means more time at your workbench. In the meantime, we at FineScale Modeler will do our best to bring you information about models and modeling. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Aaron Skinner. Sorry, I screwed that out. Sorry, Elizabeth. How dare you? I'm My hands are going to be so clean. <laughs> <laughs> There's a first time for everything. Good one. <laughs> you can't even be mad at that. <laughs> High five. <laughs>